Good morning to everyone. Here we are for the AICT sponsored short term training program on fundamentals of finite element analysis and its applications in engineering. We are in day three, session one. The session one is going to be on 2D element axis symmetry condition and its application. It will be presented by Dr. C. Sindhamari Kannan, Assistant Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering. Penalur. Let me introduce the guest for everyone. Dr. Sendamari Kannan is an experienced assistant professor with a demonstrated history of working in the education management industry. Skilled in e-learning, lecturing, dynamics, academic advising, and educational technology. Strong education profession with a doctorate degree focused in mechanical engineering from Anna University Chennai. He did his schooling in Chennai, mm -hmm. secured 83 percentage, finished his undergraduation at the University of Madras in the year 1999. He secured fifth rank and secured first class with distinction. He completed his master's in computer aided design and his post graduation, he also secured distinction. In August 2017, he completed his doctorate from Anna University. His research topic is study of free and forced vibration characteristics of micro rubber and nano silica reinforced woven fabric hybrid carbon composite beams for structural applications. He is now currently working in Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering, which is ranked under NIRF. He has published more than 60 journals and he has coordinated and conducted 24 FDPs and workshops. He has also completed one AICT sponsored RPS project. We welcome you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Amos, for your uh, introduction. Sir, can I start, sir? Yes, sir. You can start the session, sir. Thank okay, you, sir. Thank you, sir. Once again, uh, I also welcome you all for this uh, third day FDP. So my session is going to be on axisymmetric condition and its applications. So what is an axisymmetric element? Mostly we know that, uh, that uh, most of our uh, components are divided into two things. One is going to be axis of revolution solids and another is going to be prisms in that uh, this axis of uh, revolution solids is going to be comes under, you can able to model uh, using this axis symmetric element that is converting three dimensional objects into two dimensional one so that we can able to do the analysis part, uh, part very easily so this axis symmetric element is a two dimensional element it is a triangular shape having three nodes of each and every node it is having two displacements so it is going to be having six degrees of freedom so each node it is going to be two displacements so three into two so it is going to be six degrees of freedoms. So when element is symmetry with respect to geometry and loading exists about an axis, when loading exists about the axis, then we are going to use this axis symmetry problems, uh, so elements uh, in this FE analysis. Okay. So one another example is going to be, you can also use the thick wall, the pressure vessel. Okay. Uh, due to because of the soil mass, the forces will be developed over it. That is our petrol tanks, diesel tank, what we are having in our petrol pump, diesel pump stations. It is going to be that uh, this tank and all is going to be in that uh, underground only. In the, so their soil mass is going to be giving the force over the tanks. Okay, So those kind of tanks is one example for this kind of soil masses subjected to thick wall pressure vessels. So where we can use this axis symmetric element for finite element analysis. So in when you are going for different kinds of symmetry, uh, we are having this four kinds of symmetry. One is going to be mirror symmetry, then uh, axis symmetry. Wait, wait, wait. Sir? Sir? Yes, yes. Okay. So it is going to be repetitive symmetry, cyclic symmetry. Okay. So in mirror symmetry, it is not with respect to the exactly, it is need not to be of a three-dimensional one. So even it is going to be a two-dimensional plane 
it may be of a just a reflection image so it can be a mirror symmetry similarly in repetitive symmetry it is this that need not to be with respect to the axis like our rack or a rack and pinion gear arrangement what we are having is going to be the rack so it is going to be we can tell it as the repetitive symmetry in cyclic symmetry once again it is need not to be on a three dimensional object it may be a two dimensional plane object like our gears so gears which is going to be a uh, uh, cyclic symmetry but axis symmetry one which is going to be exactly representing the three dimensional uh, symmetry or uh, that is uh, so with respect to this uh, we are going to have among this four the axis symmetry objects we are going to converting three dimensional axis symmetrical object into the two dimensional uh, elements that we are going to be model in the form of two dimensional element in the uh, ansys otherwise any other finite element softness so how to model this how to uh, in this the cylinder is going to be hollow cylinder hollow cylinder this hollow cylinder if i am going to model it so with respect to the axis it is enough to model only the cross section part of this uh, hollow cylinder so with res this cross sectional model if i am revolve about the axis even any one of our software if you are going to revolve about this axis then we will get this hollow cylinder so whatever the cross section may be any cross section this jar this jar cross section is going to be like this so whatever the cross section we are going to have it that cross section is enough to be uh, this is enough this cross section is enough to represent the entire model so this cross section if we can able to model that is very easiest in the to analyze this part also so so our axis symmetric elements are going to be converting our 3d models and it's loading with respect to the simple 2d elements so in this case you can see that even our flywheel okay bearings thick walled pressure vessels like this we can able to model using this axis symmetric elements so axis symmetric solid of revolution is defined as a 3d body that is generated by rotating a plane and is most easily described in cylindrical coordinates very important cylindrical coordinates because we are going to describe our axis symmetric element also in cylindrical coordinate r and z so whatever in a finite dimensional also we are going to be described with respect to r and z so z is going to be our axis of symmetry if the geometry support conditions load and material property r r everything is going to be axially symmetric okay that is it is to be independent of the theta okay then only we are going to represent this axis symmetric solid as a two dimensional one there should not be any variation with respect to theta so if suppose if this is going to be a cylinder with respect to zero degree we are having one material at exactly at 180 degree different material means then definitely we are not going to have use this axis symmetric element so this condition should to be satisfied geometry support conditions load and material property everything should to be axially symmetric that is going to be very very important so th that means it is going to be independent of the theta so if it is dependent on theta we can't use the axis symmetric element so one such cases of examples example is going to be this circular footing loads that is going to be the soil load only okay we will have the soil uh, over the soil we will have the loads so this kind of load also we can able to demonstrate using the axis symmetric element pressure vessels thick walled pressure vessels rocket nozzles okay which both is going to be subjected to thermal as well as pressure loading but this thermal pressure loading both is going to be independent of the theta that is uniform all across 360 degree whatever the uh, thermal load which is given for this pressure vessel will be same so that is going to be we have to keep in mind with respect to theta not with respect to radius or not with respect to z with respect to theta it is going to be same so whenever this element is going to be used so we can use uh, use it for symmetrical condition with respect to geometry okay and also for the loading conditions now 
uh, these are all the applications we've seen it uh, initially for finite element analysis if you are studying with respect to axis symmetric element we must know about the stiffness matrix so in our uh, in my seminar the next half an hour uh, it may be with respect to the derivation of the stiffness matrix after derivation the stiffness matrix i am going to solve via finite element analysis problem with respect to axis symmetric one so that is my plan so in this case so i what i am going to take means this is going to be axis symmetric element so this triangle shape okay they are calling it as triangle tori so this is going to be symmetrical with respect to the z axis you can see this uh, if i take this triangle and revolve with respect to z axis then that is going to be it form a toroidal shape okay so it is given as the triangle tori so about an axis it is going to be the z axis that z axis is going to be called as axis of symmetry or axis of revolution this each vertical cross section of this uh, element is going to be a plane triangle okay so nodal points of this axis symmetric triangle element with res it is going to be with respect to circumferential one you can see that the upper triangular point is going to be the m point okay it, which defines the circumferential line of this your toroid and similarly i and j which is going to be inner diameter and outer diameter of the bottom most toroid so that means the nodal point of an axis symmetric triangular element uh, this uh, in this application which describes the circumferential lines okay, another important thing in this kind of thing that is the stresses exist only in the xy plane that means with respect to the theta that stresses is going to be zero okay so this is going to be zero so with respect to the xy plane only we are going to be have the stresses in axis symmetric problems the radial displacements develop the circumferential strains radial displacement due to because of the force okay radially what will happen means there will be the force this pressure will act over this so there will be some amount of displacement will be caused radially so that radial displacement is going to be induced sigma r sigma theta that is the radial stress circumferential stress then it is going to be stress along the z direction and shear stress with respect to r and z indicate the radial circumferential and longitudinal direction so sigma z is going to be longitudinal direction so triangular this torus element axis symmetric element often used to idealize this axis symmetric system okay because we are axis symmetric element itself a uh, just a cst element toward a next level that's a, not anything more than that okay so in this case we are using axis symmetric element means it is a triangular element only not anything uh, more than that it is a triangular element so we are going for this uh, some applications is going to be i given here it is going to be doomed pressure vessel can be solved using the axis symmetric element and also we are going to be having uh, some other kind of uh, pressure vessels and this is going to be the engine wall stem okay engine wall stem this is the most common picture which is going to be given in all the finite element analysis books and the, whatever the load we are going to be have some kind of tensile compression test also uh, in this tensile compression test also we can able to solve using this uh, axis symmetric elements this is very very important because of symmetry about the z axis the stresses are independent of the theta coordinate that is very very important there is no stress with respect to the theta direction okay so because of that what is the meaning means the shear component shear component is, is going to be allow with respect to theta in sense with respect to theta the shear component shear strains with r theta and shear strains with respect to theta is that both is going to be all shear stresses all is going to be zero very very important with respect to this axis symmetric problem now uh, we are going for the derivation okay and then the derivations uh, please bear with me it is for half an hour derivation slowly we have to do it so consider an axis symmetric ring element so this is axis symmetric ring element 
and its cross section to represent general strain of strain. Okay, for the it is going to be a general strain of strain for an asymmetric problem. So in this, uh, I am going to describe what is this u u plus do u on the next slide. So we are going to take a axis of small portion of this uh, uh, rectangular uh, hollow cylinder. Cross section is going to be rectangle, but further we are going to be model using this axis symmetric element. So the displacement, okay, displacement in this A, B, C, D, uh, in the plane of cross section, the topmost plane, topmost plane, this plane I have taken this and it is going to be uh, given the displacements are given here. So we are going to take the displacement along the R, displacement along the R is going to be U. That is the radial direction displacement. Displacement along the Z, it is going to be, we taken it as W for our uh, uh, derivation, longitudinal direction, it is W. So whenever there is going to be pressure along the radius, so this pressure along the radius is going to be have a small displacement. So that displacement we are taking along the radial direction U, change in displacement, change in displacement we are taking it as do U by do R. Okay. So in the finite element analysis, the next side, if you are going, it is going to be partially derivative of the other part. So it is going to be u plus do u by do r into dr. So what is the normal strain in the radial direction means the normal strain in the radial direction is do u by do r. Okay. So the normal strain, because it is going to be change in uh, uh, what is the displacement is going to be do u with respect to the radial direction. So it is going to be do r. Strain in this tangential direction is going to be de depends upon the tangential displacement V. Okay, tangential displacement V, but there is no tangential displacement along this. Uh, there is no shear stress A, C, B, D. There is no shear stress, so no tangential displacement. No, so it is going to be zero. That is very very important in this case of axisymmetric deformation behavior. So tangential strain do only due to because of the radial displacement, not anything because of your uh, tangential uh, component. So having only the radial displacement u, the new length of this r t a b is going to be r plus u into d theta. So along this r, along this r, it is going to be r plus u into d theta. Hence, the tangential strain is going to be given as the change in length is going to be the difference of this r plus u into d theta minus r theta divided by the original one, it is r d theta, the curve r theta, this curve r is going to be the r d theta. So if I sub this r d theta, r theta will get cancelled, u d theta, d theta will be get cancelled, the strain along the theta direction is going to be u by r. Now we are going for this. Uh, BDEF that is longitudinal strain and shear strain. So what is this BDEF you can see here? So this part along the pressure vessel we are taking first initially we taken the ACB, ACBD this topmost plane. Now we taking this BDEF this plane we are going to consider to calculate about this longitudinal uh, strain and the shear strain. So in this case due to because of the force what is going to be happen means here you see that here this part is going to be u displacement along the r here this is going to be w displacement along the z direction okay so this element displacement due to because of the pressure by means of along this z direction do w by do z and along the radial direction it is do, do u by do r okay so it is going to be taken along the line b e and e f now, so further, if you are observing the line EF, okay, this line EF is going to be having now uh, shifted in an angled way, angled way. So what is going to be happen means upward. It is going upward. A straight line EF is going to be upward. It is now upward. So now the, the this displacement is with respect to dr. Initial changes dou w by dou r into dr with respect to the point E. Similarly, with respect to this uh, B, B is going to be actual straight line here. Now it is moved in this way. So it is going to be dou u by dou z into dz. So the longitudinal normal strain is going to be given as 
strain Z. This is strain Z is going to be longitudinal normal strain is given by dou W by dou Z. Similarly, shear strain in R is a plane. Shear strain in this R is a actually with uh, whatever the plane is shown, it is going to be R is a plane only. So in this shear strain is going to be dou U by dou is is that plus dou W by dou R. Now, so whatever the strain element we discussed till now is going to be strain with respect to radial direction, strain with respect to circumferential, strain with respect to the longitudinal direction, then shear strain. So this in this last three slides, we derived this part. So what is going to be isotropic in this one already, uh, this derivation under already uh, maybe in the previous classes it is described to you with respect to CST element, plane stress and plane strain element. So isotropic stress strain relationship is going to be uh, this one. So sigma into this uh, Young's modulus into Poisson ratio, this concept it will be there into uh, strain. Uh, this is the Andy Hooke's law with respect to our isotropic stress strain relationship. Now, exactly, we are going for that uh, axisymmetric element, exact point. Okay, in this, so yeah, circular shape, you can see that how many triangles is going to be needed to resolve the circular shape into the axisymmetric element. Okay. Now, as usual, because you are in the third day, so definitely for any de derivation, we have to assume a displacement function we have to assume a displacement function here we are having the two axis r axis and z axis hence we need the three constants a1 plus a2 r plus a3 z okay so one is with respect to u that is along the radial direction so each and every node is having u displacement as well as w displacement so u is going to be a function of radial and longitudinal one. Hence, it is going to be the displacement function is a1 plus a2 r plus a3 z. Similarly, w displacement with respect to z is going to be a function of once again r and z only. So, uh, once again, we need three constants. So a4 plus a5 r plus a6 z. Always. For any shear function derivation, what is our primary aim is to determine what is A1, A2, A3 only. So we are going to do that. Then after this B matrix, then we are going to derive the stiffness matrix. Okay. So in this, uh, we are going to assume with respect to the nodal points displacement because all, there are three nodal points. I, it is I, J, M for triangular element, three nodal points are there. So each and every nodal point having U as well as W displacement. So I is having U, W. So two displacement, U, I, W, I. Similarly, J nodal point is having U, J, W, J. Similarly, M nodal point is also having two displacement. So this is going to be the displacement function of three nodes. Now, uh, first, initially, we taken only the U displacement alone. So in this U displacement, what is going to be the A1, A2, A3? Okay. So in this U displacement, if we are going to solve, okay, with respect to the U displacement function, central displacement function, the initial one, we can write like this. All the six constants, if we are writing in the matrix form, we can write like this. So then further, if you want to solve it, okay, further if you want to solve it, then on, only for the U matrix and W matrix, take the U displacement function and write it in the matrix form. And similarly, write take the W displacement function and write it in the uh, w, uh, matrix form. We want to find out A1, A2, A3. Always we will do it in the any shape function derivation of stiffness matrix. The constant has to be first calculated. So A equal to X inverse of U. So in this X inverse, once again, this is very ordinary matrix problem only. So one by two A of uh, alpha I, alpha J, alpha M. What is this alpha I, alpha J and all? This multiplication, cross multiplication only. Alpha I is nothing but cross multiplication of so RJ into JM minus RM into ZJ. So this alpha is representing the cross multiplication. That is cofactor 
alpha e is the cofactor of this matrix so 2a is going to be the determinant it is the area matrix it is going to be the determinant of this so area matrix full determinant you can write it this is the area of the triangle So now the coefficient matrix, the cofactor, cofactor of the alpha i is going to be this. Okay, when I'm taking the multiplication, cross multiplication, first cofactor is going to be this R j into J M minus R M into Z J. Similarly, second cofactor it is going to be Z M minus Z J. So if you write alpha i cofactor, alpha j cofactor. So the cofactors will be this things. Okay, if you want to write it, then you can use this cyclic manner. Okay, if it is alpha i, then next j m will be there. Similarly, alpha j, then you have to go in the cyclic way. J after j, it is going to be m and i. This is uh, just for student purpose. But if you just uh, uh, take it from your matrix, you can easily write the cofactors. Then take this cofactors and divide it by 2a. That is the area of the triangle. <coughs> we can able to calculate the a1, a2, a3 constants. Uh, similarly, a4, a5, a6. For the displacement u, for the displacement u, so actually the above equation from the displacement equation, simple displacement equation, this is going to be the simple matrix form, the first initial matrix form. So in this, you, uh, we have to substitute what is going to be the values of A. Values of A matrix is going to be this one, 1 by 2A into alpha A, alpha J, alpha M. So that is to be substituted here. When you are substituting, okay, when you are substituting, then it is going to be the multiplying, multiplying the matrix. You will get this equation. Further, for the first equation is with respect to U. R of Z function and for the W displacement R of Z function just simply multiplying the matrix you, we will get this for equation okay so from this equations if you see that the displacement function you can able to calculate the nodal values okay so this is Ni so shape function Ni Wi this is going to be n2 wj this is going to be n3 so shape function of each and every element we can able to calculate so that is the shape function whatever we show here just rewriting this displacement function and comparing with respect to that uh, w equal to ni wi n nj wj so comparing this uk equation with this one so we can able to write what is shape function of ith node, jth node, and z node. So that only it has been written in the next slide. So this is going to be the shape function for our uh, axisymmetric element. Okay. So the elemental displacement can be found out using this shape function. We can able to calculate. Okay, after calculating the shape functions, multiply with this uh, what uh, u i w i and nodal displacements. We can able to calculate each and every uh, displacement for each and every node. So the shape function already we know that each and every shape function will have unity value in each and every one of each at its own node. So in this case. Ni means it is going to be in the ith node, it is going to be have the one displacement. Nj, it is going to be have the jth node, it is going to be have another displacement. And similarly, the next one. So this is the three-dimensional representation of your uh, shape function. That is uh, Ni, Nj, Nm. And also another important uh, rule in your FEA is going to be summation of all the nodes is going to be equal to unity. Okay, so now uh, we are uh, finished the shape function derivation and what uh, this is going to be the displacement equation with respect to shape function. Uh, this is for u and this is for w. Now we are going for strains. Okay, the initially uh, the first we started the derivation of stiffness matrix. 
we finished calculating the strain only so that uh, i can able to show you so elemental strain after that only though this this derivation already we finished so this four equations we are going to write it in the matrix form this four equations uh, strain along radial direction strain along circumferential direction longitudinal direction and shear strain that only we are going to be write it in the matrix form so if we are writing this in the matrix form so strain along the radial direction do u by do r strain along the z direction it is going to be longitudinal direction do w by do z strain along the circumferential direction is u by r and shear strain is this okay so when you differentiate partially differentiate u with respect to r actually u equation is going to be a not actually here i taken this a1 a1 plus a1 plus a2 r then a3 it is going to be z so whenever you are partially differentiating do u by do r that means uh, this became zero this became zero so we having only a2 so that's why it is a2 similarly w equation we taken the w equation initially it is a4 plus a5 r then a6 is that so when i am partially derivating do w by do is that so it is going to be simply it is going to be a6 okay similarly u by r just uh, you go divide the uh, u function just by r so it will become a1 by r a2 by this rr will get cancel and a3 by r so it is z by r then partially derivate u with respect to z and partially derivate w with respect to r you will get a3 plus a5 so this a3 and a5 will come so just a simple partial derivation of the u displacement function and w displacement function what we initially assumed okay as a displacement function from that we got this okay further it is going to be the we are writing with respect to the two dimensional element a two dimensional element in the matrix form that is all this component you see that only a2 is there a6 is there that means a1 a3 a4 a5 a6 is zero in the first row that's all so you have to write other than a2 in the matrix form other than a2 so all the other things are zero a1 zero a3 zero a4 zero a5 zero a6 zero next a6 only is there so one next to 1 by r into a1 1 into a2 a3 is at by r so in the last row it is going to be a3 plus a5 so it is just rewriting the previous matrix this matrix in the two dimensional elemental form the matrix form we are writing like this okay now substituting our approximation function over this displacement equation so do u by do or if you are going for that so this is going to be u okay they are partially differentiating with respect to r we will get this function okay okay so each and every derivation each and every derivative of this interpolation function that is our shape function so 1 by 2a into partially derivating with respect to r alpha i plus beta i r plus gamma ij so this partially derived i will get only beta i only so n i of r is going to be beta i by 2a similarly n j of r is going to be beta j of 2a so then n m comma r is going to be beta m of 2a so just you substitute this n i of r i n j of r n m r in the previous equation here so you will get do u by r do r this then similarly do u w by do z same way you have to go and differentiate it afterwards we have put all the elemental strain matrix all the elemental strain whatever we discussed and substitute in this we will get this sorry so we will get this kind of uh, so relationship so here the first three column is going to be the three columns is going to be beta i second three column is going to be beta j 
then third three column is going to be bm so this is b matrix so what we found out now is going to be b matrix so using the b matrix only we can able to calculate the stiffness matrix that is b transpose d b where b is going to be the hooke's law so we have to substitute that uh, uh, with respect to the whatever the isotropic stress strain relationship matrix the b matrix so here so b matrix has been we finished the derivation of the b matrix One minute, sir. The okay. So we derived the B matrix. So one minute uh, was closed, PowerPoint was closed. So the we derived the stress uh, B matrix. So the B matrix will be B I of B J and B M. This three columns. So simply we return the nine columns into three columns. So from this uh, we have to move on to the next part. That is the stiffness matrix. Uh, actually the stress strain relationship stress is equal to here d is representing our Young's modulus and poisson ratio so that d is going to be this so you have to substitute this d matrix so when you are substituting this for the uh, plain strain condition so this uh, you can able to substitute this later we are going to be have the stiffness matrix is with respect to the volume function because this three dimensional element has been converted into two dimensional one so it is going to be transpose db we are going to be use it where volume matrix is going is once again we are changing in the form of the area function so we are going for uh, 2 pi integration of a a integrate just volume but differentiation is going to be changed into area form so our dr z will come into picture that is with respect we are taking into account of radial as well as z direction and integrating with respect to that area so 2 pi also is there so if we finish this, uh, then we will get that the stiffness matrix is going to be over. Now, in order to go for the stiffness matrix, okay, it is going to be of the order of six by six for each and every beta function, uh, sorry, B matrix. So R is going to be with respect to centroidal point, just a summation of all the three nodes, Ri, Rj plus Rm divided by three. Similarly, Z centroid is going to be Zi, Zj plus Zm divided by three. So if you are substituting uh, this is uh, R bar and Z bar in this category, R bar it is going to be there. So first approximation, we will get this. Second, this is all for the body forces and the surface forces. For body force, such as gravity, in the direction of Z axis, because mostly uh, in the uh, first example, what I shown is going to be the tank which is going to be in the uh, submerged in the soil so the body force is going to be there that is going to be the gravity and centrifugal forces okay also can be able to be you can take it uh, the centrifugal forces also to be the same kind of body force formula so for that you can substitute this to calculate force 2 by integration of area shape function transpose into rb by zb into r dr z where this RB for is for the centrifugal forces like our m omega square R, here in this m um, instead of the mass, you are substituting only the density, mass density only, that is density rho omega square R. Other things are the same. Just you substitute for the centrifugal forces m instead of m, you are substituting density m omega square R. It is density omega square R.
So next for surface forces, for surface forces, it is going to be along the any one surface. We are going to take that uh, traction force T into shape function of transpose into ds, that is surface uh, function. So in this case, you know, what is this? For instance, for node J, you have to substitute Nj, whatever we derived here. So we will get this uh, N, uh, shape function. Then the pressure, the two pressure here, it is acting as per the diagram. Example of what I shown here, it is radial pressure and uh, uh, is that along the z direction we are having the pressure the pr and pz into 2 pi r j into dz so stresses are not constant in each element okay stresses are not constant they are usually determined by any one of the method one in the centroidal element to stress otherwise we can determine the nodal stresses for the element and we can average them so this is very important point now as one problem because they are having the enough time a single problem I am going to uh, solve it in finite element approach whatever the stiffness matrix I derived uh, in this the first initial uh, first part using that we are going to solve a problem for next half an hour so first half an hour is dedicated uh, uh, almost 40 minutes is dedicated for derivation of the stiffness matrix now this pressure vessel problem thick wall cylinder problem which is under the internal pressure P equal to 1 PSI we take it for a easy understanding purpose, one PSA, determine the displacement and stress. So it is going to be for the next uh, 20 to 30 minutes, the full entire problem is going to be discussed. This With this one problem, I can able to close my presentation. This single, uh, uh, what is this? Uh, cross section, the cross section along this uh, cylinder this cross section, the entire cross section is going to be rectangular cross section for all of cylinder. This rectangle cross section is going to be taken here. So this entire rectangle cross section, the dimension I taken, it is going to be the internal dimension is 0.5 inch, outer dimension is 1 inch, and the height, total height is 0.5 inch. Internal pressure is developed is 1 PSI. That entire triangle is now divided into five axisymmetric elements. So, uh, sorry, four axisymmetric elements one, two, three, four. Each axisymmetric element having its three nodes. So, actually, this is not fine mesh, this is coarse mesh. For finite element analysis, we are doing in the mathematical approach by ourselves, we have to go only with respect to coarse mesh. We can't go for fine mesh. We are if you want to go for fine mesh, we can use Abacus or ANSYS. Even MATLAB, we can use it. The so force matrix, this is going to be the force matrix. Uh, force matrix, because we have to solve the this one, then only we are going to find out what is going to be the displacements along each and every node. Totally, there are five nodes. So in our problem, we can see that one, two, three, four, five. Totally, there are five nodes. Each and every node is having two displacements. So 5 into 2, 10 displacements. So our stiffness matrix is going to be 10 by 10 order. Okay. So we are having the, each and every node, we are having two forces, radial as well as horizontal, sorry, radial as well as longitudinal forces. Similarly, two displacement, radial displacement and uh, longitudinal displacement. Now we are to find out uh, the stiffness matrix first. Then if you're substituting the force equation, we can able to solve the displacement and stresses next step so we are going for the b matrix so this is the b matrix uh, we have to uh, compute for each and every element for so first element second element third element four elements are there so each and every element we have to compute it first stiff uh, matrix element is going to be number one so in the first element this is the first element the first element we can see that what is Ri. So Ri is 1. 1 is going to be 0.5 inch. R2, R2 is going to be 1 inch. Then this 0 0.75, 0 0.75 is going to be middle node. Middle node in sense, R is the radius, which is the first initial, it is 0.5, last it is going to be 1. In between 0.5 to 1, it is 0.75. So Rm, the middle node is going to be 0.75. Similarly, is that type? Is that length along across the longitudinal direction this is zero then 
z direction also zero only z uh, m direction only the length is there for the this rectangle first rect triangle so that is going to be at exactly point uh, file of so it is going to be point two five so this is the element one dimensions that is r i r j r m dimension that is nodal dimensions this is for z z z m just to substitute these values to calculate beta i and gamma i and all uh, centroidal r uh, centroid and z centroid that is uh, r1 ri plus rj plus rm divided by 3 similarly z i plus z z plus z m by 3 that is uh, r centroid and z centroid so now we are substituting we have to calculate the b matrix we have to find out alpha i alpha j alpha m so what is alpha i means rj jm minus z j z m so you can substitute these values you can calculate what is alpha i alpha j alpha m okay so after calculating alpha similarly we can calculate beta and gamma so after this alpha beta gamma is over we can substitute in our b matrix okay so this is for a centroidal r bar so r bar is going to be summation of this 0.5 1 0.75 and divided by 3 you will get 0.75 inch similarly z bar is going to be 0.0833 inch area area is going to be 1 by 2 r z R is going to be 0.5 and Z, Z is going to be 0.25. The area of the triangle, okay, simply you can calculate 1 by B by H itself. So 0 0.0625 in square. Everything is now over for element 1. Just you have to substitute in our B matrix. So if you are substituting whatever the calculated alpha, beta, gamma, and your R centroid and Z centroid, your B matrix for element 1 is this. So we have to be very careful. So we have to take this and keep it aside. Then we have to go for the next element two, same like that element two. We have to calculate the B matrix. Similarly, element three B matrix and element four B matrix. Just for element two, what is going to be R and Z? The remaining things we can able to do it mathematically. Okay. Uh, before going to element 2, the D matrix is going to be just substitution of this Poisson matrix on the Young's modulus. You can substitute it. So after substituting Young's modulus and Poisson ratio, this is our D matrix. Now, D matrix is over. So, B transpose D for the element 1 itself. You can take the B matrix and trans, uh, transpose it and multiply with the D matrix. This is the value for B transpose D matrix. That is, we are going towards stiffness matrix for element 1 because global stiffness matrix is going to be for stiffness matrix all the four element 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 stiffness matrix is going to be globally converged. Okay, so this is going to be B transpose DB stiffness matrix for element 1. So that's why it is K to the power of 1. Next, we are going for element 2. So, in the element 2, we have to see that what is Ri. Uh, so, this is the first node. The dis distance is going to be 1 inch. Then, Rj. Rj is going to be the, once again, same. Because along the radius, Ri, Rj, both are going to be same for the element 2. And Rm is going to be the, along the radius, because it is 1 uh, centroid of this triangle alone where it will be there means it will be here so the centroid point is will be here so it is going to be 0.75 so this one if we can able to calculate that's all there after just a mere substitution only similarly z i z j z m z j is going to be along this point z i is going to be zero because it is z longitudinal direction zero z j is 0.5 then once again z m means uh, middle point middle point now 0.5 by 2 it is 0.25 now we have to once again calculate alpha beta gamma and r bar and z bar for this new uh, triangle uh, element 2 once the r bar will be changed summation of this 3 divided by uh, summation of this 1 plus 1 plus 0.75 divided by 3 and similarly z bar now we are calculating alpha i, alpha j, alpha m by merely substituting just r i, r j, r m of the corresponding element 2, then beta i, then uh, this r bar and z bar, b transpose d matrix. So here b matrix is over. 
so you can substitute alpha gamma beta and uh, r bar z bar then finally assemble uh, go for b transpose d then once again multiply with b matrix we can get for the element 2 next similarly element 3 initially we will see this out to find out r i r j r m only for element 3 here so it is going to be r i is going to be 1 because this is the third node r i is going to be 1 r j is going to be the middle uh, okay sorry r j is going to be this one fourth node it is 0 0.5 r m is going to be middle so it is 0 0.75 then z z so z z for this third triangle already it is going to be at the top third third node is going to be at 0.5 only fourth node is also at 0.5 but fifth node is going to be at 0.25 at the exactly at the center so three four five so this is third node point this is fourth node point this is fifth node point substituting once again this r i r j r m and the corresponding z i z j z m you will get alpha, beta, gamma, and the R bar and Z bar. You can able to calculate the elemental stiffness matrix for three, element three. Next, up, we can calculate for element four. So element four is this. For element four, so we have to take a one, so point five distance, then 5, 5 is at this point, so at the center, so 0.75, then 4, so clockwise manner. So 1, 5, 4. So 1 point distance, 1 fifth distance, fourth node distance. Similarly, here also 1, 5, 4. So 1 is at 0 level longitudinally, z is at 0.25, 4 is going to be at the top node, so 0.5. So now we substitute and calculate alpha, beta, gamma with the simple values we will get this so r j is at m z j r m if you substitute you will get alpha i alpha j and alpha m for fourth element now we are in the fourth element similarly beta i beta j and gamma i gamma j and corresponding centroid of this fourth triangle or element then area we will calculate b transpose db we can calculate and we will get the stiffness matrix four so four stiffness matrix is over now. So after calculating the four stiffness matrix, now our thing is we have to put together all this four stiffness matrix in a global matrix. So this is the global stiffness matrix. So substituting in all this four stiffness matrix, we can able to form the global stiffness matrix. Now force, force is going to be very, very, very important. Out the force is given here is is the pressure one PSI along the internal wall one and four along the internal wall one and four so first node and fourth and the first node first node okay first node it is going to be PR and once again the uh, PZ is not going to be there once again in the year also it is going to be PR we have to substitute here the, this point we have to substitute 0.785 so it is going to be so we have to substitute the fourth point is this here one r and four r what is going to be have means two pi into r e r r it is going to be 0.5 inch then z z is total distance so here r and z so r and z two pi r and z so 0.5 in 0.5 divided by two into the actual pressure given is 0.785 so this one we have to substitute here so when you are substituting that once again point u4 here you have to substitute point 0.785 remaining places under zero only now we can solve this now we can solve it you can, if you are solving it you will get this displacements okay so whenever we are solving this the displacement we have to observe this displacement you observe this u1 equal to 0 0.032 u4 is 0 0.0322 w1 0 0.0115 w4 is minus 0 0.0155 similarly this u2 will be equal to u3 displacement why because means because the pressure acting in the internal walls so the pressure acting in the internal walls here 
so this pressure is acting in there so the pressure acting in the internal walls here so the displacement produced in u1 and displacement produced in u4 both should be same if you are getting different result then it is going to be wrong so u1 and u4 should to be equal similarly the outer displacement here 3 and 2 this is going to be equal so that's how the our answer is also u2 and u3 is equal now you have to compare and see that u1 and u w1 and w4 w1 is also 0 0.0115 along the z direction w4 also 0 0.01 minus that is due to because of your poison effect okay because we are going to have the poison ratio effect which is fixed in our d matrix and symmetricity and effect so this is also to be w1 will have positive value means w4 will have negative value and the same like our w2 and w3 will have same value but negative very important is definitely w5 will be zero because along the z direction there will not be any w5 so that is going to be symmetry because of the symmetrical one you we can be arranged like this if you are, so if this exactly if i draw a line so this is going to be symmetrical form so two four one three exactly this fifth point will have the axial displacement zero now we are going to calculate the stresses okay it is easiest so with this five minutes another five minutes uh, to after calculating this my i am going to conclude it already it's a theoretical one so sigma we are going to calculate determine the stress for element one so that element stiffness mat b matrix we have to take for each and every element b matrix is different but uh, d matrix is same so db db multiplication so b matrix of element one we can take and multiply with that and we now know all the displacement u1 u2 w1 everything we know it so you so far the first element is going to be first node second node and fifth node so fifth node displacement we have to substitute so db d matrix the d matrix b matrix and u displacement if you multiply we will get elemental stresses for the stress uh, that is radius stress longitudinal stress circumferential stress and strain shear strain for the first element is calculated similarly for element two we have to substitute b matrix element for the element two and corresponding two displacement third displacement and fifth node displacement here then if you multiply it, we will get elemental stresses for the element 2. Then for element 3, similarly the B elemental B matrix for 3 you have to substitute. Corresponding nodal displacement 5, 3, 4 if you are substituting it, we will get uh, stresses, elemental stresses uh, for the element 3. Then finally we can also go for elemental stresses for 4th element, elemental stresses for 4th element okay that is your uh, fourth element it is 154 so the nodal points 154 we can calculate uh, substitute the nodal displacement then multiply with the uh, elemental matrix b matrix 4 and d matrix we will get this uh, elemental stresses radius stress longitudinal stress circumferential stress and shear strain for the stress uh, elemental matrix for elementals triangle 4 also okay so these are all the values for element one and element three okay for element one and three cyclic symmetry once again with respect to that one and three okay so you can see the answers even though it is differently you multiplied in different uh, it is going to be the so symmetrical due to because of the symmetry okay we will get the same answers we are going to get the same answers and similarly for element 2 and 4 element 2 and 4 also it is going to be same answer uh, not so, sorry not same answer only for element to be uh, 1 and 3 it is going to be same answer for 2 and 4 it is going to be uh, different answers only hey okay, thank you so this one uh, we are going to discuss
so i discussed about that uh, what are the different kinds of uh, applications which is going to be the we can use it for the axisymmetric element then uh, element derivation of the stiffness matrix uh, with respect to finite element approach then in with respect to same finite element approach how to solve a pressure vessel problem okay i taken four elemental uh, elements uh, triangular elements and solved it and conclude with that elemental stress and displacements uh, thank you sir amos is the hello any questions maybe a uh, 10 minutes before i uh, left i think so a uh, lot land 15 i am my aim but uh, since all the uh, faculty members why each and every element i have to repeat it i uh, skipped after one each and every element feedback link is posted already posted ashwin kannan already posted mm -hmm. maybe this is somewhat a uh, previous session and the last stp this one is going to be a very uh, actual finite element approach uh, stp it is not a uh, theoretical one uh, fully theoretical one uh, everything is going to be so uh, just a derivation and problem solving previously it was been my it is my phd so that i can able to deliver more content in that uh, beam related thank you sir thank you very much sir almost sir. almost sir only no okay thank you sir thank you very much sir can i leave sir thank you sir thank you sir